So, dear all, welcome for this afternoon session of the 2021 edition of the Summer School Studies in Sufism. Now, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce you, uh, Gregory Van Damme. He is a PhD, uh, well, still candidate, but almost there yeah. at the Université Catholique de Louvain, and is one of the most promising uh, and emerging experts of uh, Ibn Arabi and Akbarian writings and doctrines. His upcoming work on the metaphysical per perplexity, Haira, has been long awaited by the academic community and by those interested in Ibn Arabi. And it, we, we waited because it, it will be for sure a landmark for future studies. He's also engaged in public dissemination activities regarding the topics of Sufism, Islamic ethics, and their place in the contemporary world. So Gregory, the floor is, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, uh, Michele, for this very, very gentle, maybe maybe too gentle uh, presentation, very generous. Um, I'm really happy to be here with you again as one of the veterans of, the, of this summer school. Uh, I've been a student during the first, the, yeah, the first sessions and now I, I'm honored to give a talk here. Um, so as I said just before, unfortunately I did not have the time to, to prepare a PowerPoint. Uh, very sorry for this. Usually, I, I try to to make ones, but uh, yeah, I was I was very busy actually dealing with the text uh, and trying to make something relevant for the for the summer school, uh, and also today because I listened to the very very great talk by Professor Ventura this morning, and of course he addressed already uh, a lot of essential and uh, elementary points regarding uh, Insan al Kamil in the Akbari perspective. So I wanted to, to calibrate a bit my talk uh, on his in order not to, to repeat uh, too many things, but maybe to, to go in great details and uh, to, to expand a little bit on uh, some of the most important aspects that we already addressed this morning. So um, for the little story, uh, what I will present here is very much uh, a work uh, in progress uh, based on unrevised uh, translation. So very sorry for the, the English speakers among you if they are horrible uh, English uh, phrases, uh, it, it is very possible. Um, but I, I translated in French uh, some parts of, uh, of the commentary of Kaisari. I will present it just, uh, just after this uh, for an anthology of um, of philosophical texts uh, to be published in France. And uh, yes, I, I came across this very interesting concept of the invisible or hidden caliph uh, in uh, Kaisari's commentary on the, on the chapter on Adam in the Fusus al-Hikam. So when, uh, when uh, Pro uh, Professor Rizzi and, and Petrone asked me to, uh, to give a talk on the Insan al-Kamil in the Akbar tradition, I, I immediately thought about about this notion and uh, yeah and, and try to um, to go through the entire commentary on the fast with this perspective so uh, for me the 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 the, the importance of uh, of reading this as professor ventura already pointed this morning uh, is to, to 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 bring a new perspective uh, on the, the human being but which is always in this tradition, of course, both a, metaf a metaphysical, philosophical perspective, but also, and maybe foremost, an experiential perspective. So the interest in the intellectual, philosophical texts as the one we are uh, going to deal with here is that uh, it precisely allows us to change our perspective on the human being and on our human act of being. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it allows us to, to look at our human being from, from another point of view uh, and to look for our human being uh, in, in other, other places than, than, than usual. So I think it's very uh, important and, and actually interesting even in a very 
experiential and spiritual uh, way to to take very seriously what uh, uh, these authors have to have to say. That's what I, I try to 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 do here. So basically, to 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 say it in in another way, uh, rather than constructing an ID or conception conceptualization of the, the perfect man or the perfect human being. Uh, I think that a text like this, uh, the Fusus el Hikam, and and but also the a commentary like this, is here to deconstruct, uh, and we will come back a lot on on this on the the notion of tajrid, not the de the deconstruction in a, the Ridian way, but uh, deconstruction as as tajrid, the, the the stripping, freeing oneself of a lot of preconceptions, a lot of um, false. Uh, false certitude and so on, and to bring another uh, vision on, on human being and another experience of the human being. So that is a bit uh, the kind of approach I will have uh, to the text. So we, to deal uh, with the notion of Insan Kamil, uh, of perfect man in the Akbarian tradition, uh, of course, one of the probably one of the first texts we have in mind, as Professor Ventura said this morning, is the the Fusus al Hikam of Ibn Arabi. We know that the notion of Insan Kamil was uh, really really uh, coined and, and uh, yes ex defined, uh, expressed in great details by Ibn Arabi and then by his commentators. And uh, the, the Fusus al Hikam are maybe one of the most important texts. On this issue, and we can actually consider the, the whole Fusus al Hikam as being a, a book about the Insan al Kamil. So, uh, in this book, of course, the, the Fas of Adam, uh, because it's the first chapter, the opening chapter, which is uh, uh, displayed as a key to the whole book, uh, and because it is presented as the book of the, the key to the divine wisdom, to the divine perspective. On, on human being, on the first human being is clearly a key on the notion of uh, Insan Kamil, but actually all chapters of the book uh, are different perspective on, on this reality. And we will uh, come back to, to this, but uh, I, I think the fast of Adam really needs to be read with the fast of Muhammad. So the first and the last chapters of the book need to be read together in order to have a complete uh, overview of what, uh, what what the internal camel is about, but what is inside the book uh, in cell itself. So maybe here um, it will be interesting also for people who, who are beginning to, to read those texts, uh, who want to read those texts, because I hope it will bring them uh, reading keys and uh, yeah, to help to navigate through through this very dense and demanding text. So we are dealing here, I will be dealing with uh, a commentary on the Fusus al Hikam, not really on the Fusus the, themselves or itself, uh, because I think it's very interesting to, to take Kaisari, uh, I will come back to, to him just right now, but to take him also very seriously as an, uh, as an author. Uh, and because actually in the history of the Akbarian textual tradition, the commentaries on the Fusus uh, is a genre, a literary genre in itself. Uh, all the authors almost, they take the Fusus more as a, as a pretext to, to elaborate their own uh, formulation or their, their own doctrine of, uh, of met metaphysical doctrines, but on the perfect man in particular here uh, from their uh, perspective with their particular context uh, and so on. So there are many trends, uh, many families of commentaries. Here, uh, the, the commentary of, of Kaisari uh, is a very uh, important and, uh, and particular one. It can be uh, directly related to, uh, of course, to Ibn Arabi himself and to his uh, foremost disciple uh, Sadruddin Qunawi, because we know that Qunawi commented on the Fusus, but not in a systematic way. 
the first uh, systematic commentary on the Fusus was done by one of his disciple, disciples, uh, Mu'ayyadid uh, Jandi, uh, whose disciple Abdel Razak al Kashani uh, wrote another commentary that which is uh, very, very precise, tries to be very precise with the, and, and more systematic than maybe than, than Kunawi and, and Jandi uh, regarding the vocabulary. Uh, the, the commentary of uh, Abdel Razak al Kashani is very uh, yeah, is really trying to uh, to have a systematic use uh, of terms of technical terms, uh, but um, yeah, is really really a circumstantial uh, commentary rather than uh, a systematic co commentary uh, on its own. Whereas the the commentary we were dealing with, the commentary of Dawood al Qaisari, so who died in uh, 751 uh, in the Hijri calendar, which is uh 1350 in the and the christian uh, calendar and Dawood al-Qaisari wrote uh, what is probably one of the first uh very systematic commentary uh, of the on the fusus an attempt to um, not not only use a very the very precise technical uh, vocabulary elaborated by, of course, Ibn Arabi himself, and then Qunawi, and then Jandi, but uh, most and foremost, Kashani, which is a, a vocabulary that, um, that uh, uses a lot terms coming from uh, falsafa, from Avicennian philosophy, and also from, uh, from Kalam, from uh, the uh, rational theology of uh, many of the uh, Ashari uh, tradition. And what is very important in Qaisari's commentary is that there is a, a, a huge introduction, Muqaddima, which is actually a very precise, uh, scholastic, organized presentation of uh, all the metaphysical doctrines uh, of the, the, the Akbarian school of thought, uh, which, yeah, which really serves as, as, a, as keys to, uh, to the whole commentary, of course, and to the whole uh, thought of Ibn Arabi and his commentators uh, from, from his perspective. So Qaisari uh, is clearly also uh, writing for people who are themselves trained in philosophy, trained in theology, or maybe who, who has to, to explain Sufi notions uh, in the vocabulary of philosophy and theology, which makes him very interesting. He was uh, also for a little uh, historical overview was very important historically because uh, he was appointed as uh, founder and director of the first uh, uh, religious madrasa instituted by the, uh, the Ottomans, uh, and then he is really like the the, the 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 starting point of the long-lasting Ottoman Akbarian tradition uh, and uh, and even Ottoman school system which will be very much influenced by uh, Akbari thought after after him. So his commentary uh, on the Fusus al-Hikam, uh, which has its own interesting uh, title, interesting because there is uh, the, the use of a technical term matla, so it's matla khusus al-kilam fi shahr ma'ani fusus al-Hikam, so the the elevation points on the particularities of the specificities uh, of the, the words uh, in the commentary on the, the on significations of the Fusil Hikam. And this first word, matla, which is the point of ascension uh, or the ladder, the, the hermeneutical ladder, uh, is, it comes from the very early exegetical Quranic tradition, actually. Uh, and uh, we will we will come across it regarding uh, precisely uh, uh, a verse of the Quran in which he, he used the term the term matla. So it really alludes to the fact that behind uh, yeah, behind what we would believe we know and we understand about the text, a given text, uh, whether it is the Quran or whether it is the Fusus al Hikam, there is uh, somewhere. Uh, a point of ascension when we could, can get an upper uh, or uh, supreme perspective. That's what we will see. 
So let's uh, let's look at what's uh, what is at stake in the this chapter on Adam in the in the Fusus al Hekam and in the perspective of uh, of Kaisari precisely. Um, yes, I will just very yeah the very broad and important things that Kaisari explains it uh, Ibn Arabi also, but I, I will now quote all my quotes unless I precise uh, otherwise are from from Kaisari's commentary. And as I said, my own uh, really work in progress tra translations um, is that what is intended here by uh, Kaisari says the Adamic word huh, is the universal spirit that is the principle of the human genus of the of mankind uh, to say it in a modern way so adam here uh, will will uh, designate a lot of a lot of different things we will see and he will, he will precise it but broadly speaking uh, here it's the universal spirit of mankind which is um, explained by, by Ibn Arabi and by, by Qaisari. Of course, because we will deal with the notion of, of Caliph, uh, the, the fast, uh, so the chapter on Adam is dealing with this very important uh, uh, Quranic concept actually that mankind or Adam in the, the Quranic text as for example in the, in the verse 30 of the Surat al-Baqarah, the second uh, chapter of the of the Quran, where uh, God says to the to the to the angel that he will, uh, yeah, he will bring into existence uh, on earth a, a, a caliph, a khilafa, a khalifa. Sorry. So here, uh, the the chapter will deal with this, uh, and our reading of the chapter will uh, deal with this this uh, aspect of the of mankind as. Uh, khilaf as uh, caliphate of, of God on earth. So as Kaisari says, the specificity of the, the divine wisdom as the Adamic word is that Adam, as he has been created for the caliphate and his level is gathering the levels of the world entirely, became a mirror for the divine level, receiving in him the manifestation of the divine names entirely. No one else has this level and this capacity to receive this manifestation. That is why it has been specified for him. So here is what is uh, important and particular in, uh, in the, 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 the Adamic chapter of the Fusus. But we will, of course, unfold all of this uh, and we will see that, uh, yeah, that this idea of, of mirror is very, very important, of course. We already uh, talked about it this morning with Professor Ventura, manifestation of the divine names, etc., and uh, the capacity of reception. But as the, the title of my talk indicates, what really, uh, what is very interesting is uh, a part in, to which we will arrive, in which Kaisari uh, declares that the, co the cosmos is manifest, is apparent, is lahir, whereas the caliph in itself is hidden, is bought in. And we will see how, it, how uh, he, he, he deals with this notion of visible and invisible, of manifest and hidden. Uh, and I think it's a very interesting way to, to navigate uh, into his commentary and to read uh, his all uh, commentary and to uh, to gather together all what is uh, scattered through through the text. So just very brief remarks of uh, vocabulary uh, and perspective as Professor Ventura himself said this morning, we can use man, human being uh, indifferently, probably I will, uh, I will try to to you to use both when it's uh, relevant, but here also, as we as we just saw, we can also use, of course, Adam 
uh, I, and, and they use the word Adam to do, designate man, human being, mankind, and also in Saint Camil, perfect man. We will we will see this. The same for the the world. Uh, world as cosmos. I will use the word the, the word cosmos because I think uh, here it's really the the world as cosmos. We will see this right now. But also, um, when we talk about cosmos, we talk about what is manifest, what is uh, visible, appearance, and what is exterior to our uh, experience of human being. Even though we will see that there are slight difference between cosmos per se and our inner world, very interesting differentiations made by Kaisari. And also we talk about what is invisible, about mystery, uh, what is interior, what is hidden, um, we can say what is spiritual in a way, uh, but those terms are, uh, yes, are often used, not interchangeably, but uh, well, as, as, as almost synonyms. So let's get into it. I will, um, yes, I will try to to divide the the, the lecture. So basically, what I what I did, I I went through the text, which is quite long, uh, and gathered all passages that, that were for me relevant to understand Kaisari's perspective on uh, the the perfect man. Uh, and to, to understand how this uh, question of the hidden caliph is, uh, is very important to understand his whole uh, system and his whole view on the matter. So I will first talk about cosmos, uh, about as we, we, we saw the importance of, uh, yes, of, of understanding the cosmos existence uh, in order to understand the Intan Kamil, their a correlation as microcosmos and macrocosmos. Uh, then I will talk about the the the, the human being, sorry, in uh, in himself uh, and all his uh, his variations. I will say, uh, and then we will arrive at the the question of the of the hidden caliph. So let's begin with the with the cosmos. The first interesting remark uh, made by, by Kaisari is that um, for him, existence, so Kaun here, uh, which we usually we, we also translate by the world of generation and corruption in the classical terms. So Kaun, existence in the vocabulary, in the vocabulary sorry, of this congregation designates the being of the cosmos, so Wuju del Alam, in as much as it is a cosmos and not in as much as it is the real. So existence here is the being, not pure, sheer being, which is divine being, but the divine, the, the, the being of cosmos, qua cosmos of cosmos, as it is uh, cosmos. Kaisari adds, although for the people of rational examination, it is a synonym for absolute being that is here, the one who brings into existence, el mukawin. So basically we see that he is addressing other school of thought say, saying, okay, when we say kaun, uh, we, we do not talk about being, uh, being qua being, we talk about the cosmos here. And the synthetic existence, el kaun al-jami, is the perfect man that is named Adam, say, says Kaisari. So we have the notion of, of being, pure being, which is of course divine being in, the, in their perspective, being of the cosmos, which is the cosmos, and the synthetic uh, being of the cosmos, which is the perfect man. Um, an important remarks made by, by Kaisari is that the existence the, the, so the existence of the cosmos, the, the being of the cosmos depends and relies on the divine names and not on the divine essence as it is. We will come back to this in, in details. And by divine names here, he precises that he intends the universal and particular names, which are not uh, bound to the classical orthodox 99 names because the where where universal names are finite, particular names uh, are infinite or indefinite. 
So as we said, and already alluded to this morning, uh, the, the manifestation of, uh, of human being in the cosmos is, uh, uh, sorry, the manifestation of the cosmos and of, of human being acts as a mirror, a mirror uh, for pure being, for divine being in order to contemplate the, per the perfections of his essence that are named the names from another perspective. Um, so Kaisari says that the, this idea of, of contemplating from other uh, perspectives is very uh, important because it, it brings another uh, reality from, um, from one, uh, one infinite reality as the image of uh, something long uh, reflected in a circular mirror is circular and vice versa, so something uh, circular uh, in a long mirror appears long. So here, the, the mirror of the cosmos uh, is the, it's, it's really a way to see the unique being in a multiple indefinite uh, kinds uh, of ways. As Kaisari says, he wanted to see the essences and his essence through Adam and, he, and in Adam. Another way to to uh, to put it is uh, to put it is like Ibn Arabi himself says in the chapter of Adam, through Adam, the secret, the divine secret, his secret is manifested is manifested. Sorry to him. So here, the secret Kaisari says is the real himself and his essential perfections, for they are all the mystery of mysteries, or the invisible of the invisibles. It means that he wanted to contemplate his essence and his essential perfections that were absolutely invisible in the absolutely visible of the human being, which is the mirror of the perfect man. But importantly, uh, Kaisari adds that God is not perfected by other than him because, as he says, the positive essences or determinations, which are the, universe, the, the eternal archetypes, if you want, are the real himself and are points of manifestation in his knowledge. So he is not perfected through another than him. So here, um, now we, we, we will go further and address the correlation between man, perfect man, and the cosmos. The, so the relation that we classically call the microcosmic, macrocosmic relation. As Professor Ventura said this morning, the cosmos is called the great man uh, in, in the fast by, by Ibn Arabi. Uh, because, says Kaisari, all that is in the cosmos designates, designates sorry, what is included in the human constitution in its entirety. The essences of the cosmos are the differentiation of the human constitution. Man is a little world, a summarized form, Mujmal, and the cosmos is a great man, differentiated, Mufassal. So that is why Paisari adds some at the end uh, of the fast somewhere else that we can consider the cosmos in two ways. We can consider the cosmos according to its unicity or according to its multiplicity. When we consider it in its synthetic unicity, it's, it is called the great male, the great man, sorry, al insan al kabir, or the anthropos, if you want. Whereas when we consider the multiplicity of its individuals, it does not possess this synthetic unicity as it is the case for the unicity of man, for there is a determinate station for each of them. So we, here it is very interesting how we articulate between uh, men as men and the individual instances uh, of men and of, of perfect men. And, we can see uh, that the idea of a hidden perfect man, of a hidden caliph is 
uh, yes, appear, appears <laughs> paradoxically step by step. Kaisali adds, it is therefore unjust to say that the cosmos does not possess the unicity of synthesis absolutely. How could it not be the case when according to what is synthesized, it is the form of the divine name, just as man? Because in classical Sufi doctrine, uh, of course, man manifests the name Allah, the name God, which is the name of all the names, the, 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 precisely the synthetic names in which uh, appears and are related all the names. So uh, Qayseri uh, ends by saying that is why it is called the great man, even though what is intended by it are its individuals. So we see here that in the cosmos, what is really uh, playing the, the uh, and uh, actually embodying the function of synthesis of its creation is uh, is the human being it's the yeah it's the the, the, the man, mankind in itself which is uh, a unique aspect of of the cosmos this unique aspect is uh, ex ex expressed sorry by Ibn Arabi in uh, in the Fusil Hikam as the, the famous image of the polish of the mirror, where, whereas uh, the cosmos is the mirror, uh, the, what makes the mirror reflecting God is its polish, which is human being, which is also the spirit uh, of the cosmos. Ibn Arabi says, world is brought into existence as a phantom without spirit or as an unpolished mirror and uh, Man, mankind is precisely the spirit of this body and the polish of this mirror. So Kaisali says, the real brought the cosmos into being as a figure devoid of spirit that was like an unpolished mirror. The divine order required the polishing of the mirror for its purpose to occur. That is the manifestation of the divine secrets that are placed in the divine names and attributes. The human being is the point of manifestation that gathers all of them in a way that is both synthetic and detailed. Adam, that is the perfect man, was the very polish of this mirror and the spirit of this form. For through his existence, the cosmos was complete and its secrets and realities manifested. Apart from man, there is no existing thing in the cosmos to which are manifested both his reality, meaning the divine reality, and the reality of other than him. For man knows that it is the unicity itself that manifests itself and that becomes those realities themselves. So here we say that the, 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 particular, the particularity of human being is that, uh, that capacity to articulate between unicity and, uh, and, and multiplicity, which brings the reflecting function and aspect of the mirror of the cosmos. Um, so I, I see that the time is already flying. So maybe I uh, uh, will just say this, uh, yes, in a few, in a few words, a uh, very interesting passage uh, in the Fusus al Hikam in the Fast of Adam commented here uh, by by, uh, by Qaisari in uh, the passage in which Ibn Arabi articulates the, the synthetic reality of human being, of Adam, and the particular uh, perspective of the angels, um, saying that the, the difference between angels and human being is their capacity to, um, how to say that, uh, their capacity to uh, yeah, to, to see things from another perspective than their own. The angels cannot see uh, things from another perspective, whereas human being, because he is capable uh, to ar of articulating between unicity and multiplicity and so on, is able to, to understand that there are other perspectives than, than his. And we will see that it is very, very important. But Let's uh, 
let's stick to the, the relation and the correlation between man uh, and cosmos here. And the, the, this idea of the human being perfecting, completing the, the creation of the cosmos. The question is, what is, uh, what is the, the, the function of, of man, of the perfect man in the order, uh, meaning the logical or chronological order of creation, of coming into being? So here is what Kaisari has to say. When this synthetic existence, which we have seen that is the perfect man, is Adam. So when this synthetic existence came into being, the cosmos was completed through his concrete existence. For man is the spirit of the cosmos that manages it and uses it freely. And there is no doubt that the perfection of the body is only completed by its spirit that manages it and preserves it from damages. In fact, his material constitution appeared later in the concrete being because when his, when his reality has been established, that is characterized by the perfections in their entirety, which reality gathers, it was necessary that all the realities would already be in concrete being before he exists, so that he passed through it during his descent. He is therefore characterized by, by their signification from stage to stage, from the spiritual, celestial, and material stages until he manifested in his specific sensitive form. So, what, what we see here is that it is only the very uh, human, uh, human uh, natural elementary bodily form of human being that uh, actually uh, completes and perfects existence. And that human ha has chronologically uh, to appear uh, later because he has to go through all the stages of creation in order to be uh, its, its perfection because it's only when he arrived at the, the final and, uh, and lower stage of manifestation that he actualizes his potentiality of, uh, of, yeah, of human being and of uh, spirit of the world and polish of the mirror. But it is not actually a temporal succession. It is an ontological succession because I will not go here in great details, but of course for Ibn Arabi and his commentators, uh, the creation is always occurring. This, the, the permanent creation, which is a very important doctrine. And so this manifestation of human being through all the stages of creation until this very body, bodily elementary uh, material form is permanent. It, it occurs at every instant of, uh, yes, of creation and of time. So uh, here a comment, an interesting commentary by Kaisari he says, one cannot imagine that these essences, meaning here that the essences of the world of the cosmos, were existing in a moment in time when the human being was absolutely not existing. For we, it would imply that they were existing without the existence of their spirit. And of course, uh, both uh, in the Quranic worldview, but also in uh, Avicennian philosophical worldview, a, a body and a, and a soul uh, always go, go together um, the body and so here the body and, and the spirit uh, must have exist uh, together. So now let's focus on the human being from what we just saw. Kaisari says that basically man, human being has three constitutions, we can say. We will say that it's, it's more complicated than that, but he has a spiritual constitution, a natural elementary, so a material constitution, 
and he has a level, a martaba, a level which is the station of gathering both spiritual and uh, material uh, constitutions. He, he illustrates this uh, somewhere else uh, through the etymology of the very, the very word for a human being, el insan, uh, which has different uh, etymologies. And he says, uh, one, uh, one etymology is that insan comes from uns, which is intimacy, familiarity. Uh, and insan as uns is insan as the gathering of the divine names and of their points of manifestation. It's, it's uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, in, the human being in its more, in its more perfect aspect, uh, being clearly its more spiritual aspect. But it's also the word insan, it's also coming from nisien, from uh, forgetfulness, which is, as I said, the distraction from certain things. So the insan, says Kaisari, it's gathering both uns and nisien. It's gathering both uh, intimacy and forgetfulness. And that this is the is uh, its particularity. And it's uh, also, of course, as pointed to, uh, to by, by Ibn Arabi in, in the Fosus from the word insan el ain, which is the the uh, the pupil of the of the eye, which is both the source and the aim uh, of the of the eye. So, Kaisari says in another way, the human constitution owns the rank of comprehensiveness and synthesis through this being, that is the concrete being. So, it is because human being has a corporeal material elementary existence that is able to to be the real uh, synthesis of uh, the the cosmic existence and he adds this is because he owns through his body the rank of bodies and through his spirit the rank of spirits it is by this so by this synthesis that the argument against the angels was raised he comprehended why they did not comprehend so alluding to the Quranic episode uh, in which uh, God says about human being that he knows uh, what, what they, do, they do not know. But because we, we because all of this, uh, we have to understand that there is a kind of eternal uh, human being before even creation of mother, huh? a pure uh, spiritual human being. This, that is why we are going to see now. Kaisari says the human being is also some eternal, abadi, meaning it, it's eternal but with a beginning. So the, the human being is also some eternal according to his otherworldly constitution. In view of the elementary constitution, he is posterior to every existence meaning he is the last to appear in creation. In view of the noetic constitution, which is the, the reality of human being in the divine science or the divine intellect, he is anterior to the essences in their entirety for they are particularizations of the human reality. In view of the spiritual the, sorry, the universal spiritual constitution is also anterior to the spirits in their entirety, as alluded to by the prophet in his saying, the first thing God created is my light. In view of the particular spiritual constitution, that is in the imaginal world, is also before the originated things, the mubda'at, even though it comes after the universal intellects and souls, it comes essentially and not temporarily after, as we saw. He was thus not absolutely non-existing in concrete existence, says uh, Kaisari. So here, uh, what is the, the most uh, 
the more, more important thing to to gather is that human being is all always existing before creation at, and also in creation and uh yeah and a very important aspect that we just saw in this quotation from Kaisari is the the link of this between this eternal aspect of human being and the prophetic reality uh, as expressed in the in the saying of the, the prophet Muhammad, the first thing God created is my light. So let's see now the relationship between Adam and Muhammad. Um, and Kaisari uh, states it very, very clearly, the Muhammadan reality, al-haqiqat al-Muhammadiyah, is the reality of this human genus in the presence of divine knowledge. So what, what he calls Muhammadan reality, Hakika Muhammadi, a term also coined by, by Ibn Arabi, uh, is the reality of human being, which is in the eternal knowledge of God. And there is a very interesting phrase uh, just after this one, but uh, very, very difficult to, uh, to translate because, uh, because of, of his use of the term wujud, which is um, yeah, which is very difficult to, to translate only as being because it's all it's being and finding. But I will I will give you both. He says that so the the Muhammadan reality is the reality of this human uh, genus in the presence of divine knowledge, and all the realities of the cosmos are found through its being or through its finding through its wujud. So they are found as a summarized being or a summarized uh, finding, wujud and ijmalian, because it comprehends them according to its correspondence to the divine level that gathers all the names. Then it brings them into being as particularized being and they become positive determinations or positive essences, the, the ayan thabita. So I know it's getting more and more complicated, but uh, let's, let's uh, go to another passage which articulate all, all of this uh, in a, I hope so, more, more clear way. So clearly what, what we will have now, it's the articulation between all those kinds of, of human being, eternal, material, Mohammedan, uh, Adamic, and so on. So here, Kaisari will explain the presence of the human, the human being in the various levels of, of the cosmos. He starts by saying, Adam is the caliph of the cosmos and its manager. And Adam, in reality, is the unique soul that is the first intellect, which is, in reality, the Muhammadan spirit, al-ruh, al al-Muhammadi, that is manifested in this elementary constitution. As is alluded by his saying, by the saying of the prophet, the first thing God created is my light, through which was created this human genus, or rather, all the the genus, all the geni were created from it. So in other words, here, uh, Kaisari is synthesizing the, the notion of Adam, uh, the first human being in concreto, uh, the unique soul alluded to in the, uh, that's alluding to the first verses of, uh, of Surat al-Nisa of the chapter uh, of women, uh, the, the fourth chapter of the, of the Quran, that is, in his words, the first intellect in the words of the philosophers, which is actually the real, its real name, it's the Muhammadan spirit, the, the Muhammadan, uh, Muhammadi, sorry, the Muhammadan uh, spirit, from which the, not only humankind, not only the human genus was created, but the, the, the genus, 
the, the of every every other every other genus of every other reality. So this is uh, alluded to by the prophet by the famous saying, first thing God created is my light, but also but by another saying, I was a prophet when Adam was between the water and the clay. And this because the human reality has points of manifestation in all the worlds. So here he will explain this. So basically that there are human beings in every level uh, of being and every, and every world. His first point of manifestation is in the world of the Jabarut. Uh, I will not translate this because I think it's irrelevant to try to translate this of all powerful, the, 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 world, the world of the, 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 yes, the old power of God. So the world of the Jabarut is the first point of manifestation of human being, and it is the universal spirit called the first intellect, which is actually the first Adam. It's Eve, the Eve of this first Adam is the universal soul that has been created from his left rib that adjoins the creation, whereas his right rib uh, is the right side, uh, sorry, its right rib is the side that adjoins the real, that adjoins God. So there is the first uh, manifestation of human being. In another world, in the world of the Malakut, the angelic uh, world, we can say, the human being is the universal soul then, uh, that it was Eve uh, in the Jabarut, which was the universal soul, but in the Malakut, the universal soul is Adam, by which were generated the particular souls of the Malakut. It means the, the, the angelic souls. And it's Eve, the Eve of this universal soul, it's the universal nature that is in the bodies, which is the elementary uh, level of manifestation. So here it's very interesting because it's very classical uh, in the thought of Ibn Arabi, but uh, it's maybe rendered here uh, in a more systematic way. We have uh, what I used to call this uh, Russian dolls kind of, uh, of system. Uh, so basically uh, the, the universal soul is the Eve of the Adam of the, uh, of the Jabarut, but it's actually the Adam of the Malakut. Huh? And so we have, uh, it's, uh, every reality is always uh, two-faced. Um, and here is a good example. And then in the world of the mulk, in our world, uh, in, in dunya, we can say, is Adam, the father of mankind. And he, here he adds very interestingly, the Adam of the Jabarut and the Malakut is the eternal and sempiternal caliph. So if we go back to what, what he said, actually the caliph, uh, it's not the Adam of the mulk, it's not Adam, father of mankind. The real caliph is the Adam of the other world, uh, which is the Mohammedan reality. Uh, another way to, to put it uh, by Qaisari is that the greatest progenitor, Al Walid Al Akbar, is the real Adam, which is the Mohammedan spirit, Al Ruh Al Muhammadi, and the great progenitor. Uh, al Walid al Kabir is Adam, father of mankind. So we see how these things are articulated together. Um, yeah, I will skip this one. Okay, so now. Don't worry, don't worry that much about time. We still okay. have one hour, maybe half an hour of discussion, okay, uh, and half an hour for it. Oh, yeah, that, okay, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, just another. So let, let's let me try to explain this. Just another way to, um, yeah, to illustrate the same idea of articulations of the of the different levels, is uh, is commenting uh, on the the, the the famous first ver verse of uh, Surat Al Nisa of the fourth chapter of um, of the Quran, the the chapter of women, uh, 
which says, um, this is not my translation, I think, O oh, mankind, fear your Lord, huh? uh, who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women. So we, we, we just saw that he already alluded to this one soul. And there he makes uh, the same kind of commentary we just saw uh, regarding Adam and the human being. He says, in relation to the worlds of the Jabarut, uh, the one soul, so, so actually, sorry, let's go in, in the right order. Actually, what he will do is to read this verse as, as uh, meaningful and true uh, regarding every world, uh, not, not only our world, but uh, actually uh, we can read uh, these verses, every word of the Quran uh, as true for different levels of uh, being, of reality. So this verse in relation to the world of Jabarut, when we regard it, uh, yes, according to the world of the Jabarut, it's the one soul is the one essence, uh, which is the first intellect. And the spouse which uh, is created from him uh, is the universal soul, as we saw. And the men and women that are uh, dispersed from both of them are the what 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 is called here the separated intellects and souls, meaning angelic uh, faculties and so on of the of the cosmos. Whereas in the world. Uh, of the Malakut, the meaning of this verse is the one, uh, the one soul is the universal soul. And it's supposed, as we saw, is the universal nature, um, meaning the, the, uh, the conditions of bodily existence. And men and women that uh, are uh, dispersed from both of them are men, the rational separated souls, uh, uh, and women are the imprinted souls and the other faculties uh, of the soul. And then in relation uh, of, to our world, to the world of the mulk, Kaisai uh, says it is clear. <laughs> so meaning, meaning it is Adam, Eve and uh, uh, genetic descendants with, uh, of, the, of, of mankind. So now, that we have said all of this, and we already have, I think, very uh, uh, important, important uh, keys. Uh, let's get back to this notion of the hidden caliph, the, the hidden caliph, sorry. First, uh, in, in interesting remark uh, to understand what uh, Kreisari means by hidden caliph is there a general remark on what is hidden and manifest that clearly uh, resonates with what we just what we we just saw so Kaisari says know that everything from the manifest zahir and the hidden al-batin is divided in two parts absolutely hidden and relat relatively hidden and absolutely manifest and relatively uh, manifest. So Zahir al mutlaq wa idafi. The absolutely hidden is the divine essence, its attributes, its attributes, sorry, and the positive essences, the ayan of Tabita. The relat the relat sorry, the relatively hidden is the world of spirits. Because it is manifest in relation to the absolutely hidden, and it is hidden in relation to the absolutely manifest, that is the world of bodies. So if we uh, try to, to rebuild this thing, we have the absolutely manifest, the world of bodies, huh, which, we, which we touch. Uh, and there is uh, a relatively, hidden, which is the world of spirits, which is hidden to the, to the world of bodies, uh, but yet is uh, manifest 
uh, in relation to all the, the, the spiritual and divine reality. So we, as human being, as we have seen, we are between the two. Uh, we, are, we have both a bodily and a spiritual uh, experience. We are both spiritual being and uh, bodily being. So let's now uh, go back to, to this uh, notion of hidden caliph. Now that we have this in mind. So the first, the quotation that we, we saw in the introduction, the cosmos is manifest, is zahir, whereas the caliph is hidden, is batil. In fact, it has been designated as visible, even though some of him is invisible as the world of the separated spirits, and then, and thus, sorry, expressing metaphorically the whole by the part. So what he, what he kind of alludes to here clearly is that the, the caliph, the, the, the perfect man, human being, uh, we say that he is he, manifest and he manifests something in the world, but actually he says it is metaphorically speaking. We, we allude to uh, the human uh, reality uh, as manifest, but actually a part of him is always hidden, which is always in the ghaib, in the invisible. And then he continues and he says, what is intended by the cosmos here is the great spiritual and corporeal world for our cosmos, for it is the form of the human reality that is its invisible aspects, uh, its, its ray or its, uh, its mystery. Because the perfect man is a point of manifestation of the perfections of this reality, as well as a caliph and a manager of the cosmos. He has been made invisible in consideration of his reality that always remains in the invisible. This, this sorry, even though the caliph exists in the concrete existence. So we see again this articulation between uh, presence in the concrete existence, uh, as we saw being, uh, so sorry, human being as a, a bodily uh, material being, which is the uh, perfection of, uh, of its, uh, its reality, but its reality in itself is always in the invisible, it's always hidden. And he adds, Kaisari adds, the fact that the caliph is invisible is also a characteristic coming from a divine attribute for his ipsaity remains forever in the invisible. So basically what, what Kaisari says here is that, okay, we know that perfect man uh, is supposed to, to manifest all divine names, all divine qualities, all divine secrets that are uh, uh, present in those uh, attributes and uh, uh, names and qualities. But we know that a part uh, of God is always hidden, always non-manifested. So this quality too, uh, in a certain way, the Caliph must uh, manifest it, must represent it. And just as the ipsaity of uh, God remains always invisible, the ipsaity, of the, the caliph must remain always invisible. So here uh, is the, the, the end of the, this long quotation by Berkasari. And I think it's very interesting because it kind of challenges a bit uh, our conceptions of the notion. He says, actually, we consider the caliph as invisible to the spirits also for what flows on the first intellect and the other spirits happens through the mediation of the human reality as it is its first manifestation. 
So very uh, it, interestingly enough here, what Kaisari says is that actually even something like the first intellect does not see the, the, the real caliph because the real caliph is also hidden, invisible, even for the first intellect because the first intellect himself is receiving from the, the, the human reality, from the real caliph. And uh, of course, here is the, 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 the end of the, sorry, the end of this quotation, very, I think, very crucial, which uh, will give us kind of solution uh, that we already uh, came across uh, before. And he says, he ends by just saying, the prophet said, the first thing that God created is my light. That is the light of my determination and of my reality which is the first intellect that appeared first in the world of spirits. So what is very interesting here is that it doesn't say it again, but we saw that the Mohammedan uh, reality is therefore always uh, yeah, anterior, always uh, prior to, to everything else. And even prior to its light, uh, uh, if, we, if, we, if we understand well, uh, in another passage, uh, uh, Kaisari has this very interesting uh, and kind of classical uh, metaphor. He says, uh, the sun is hidden, to us, uh, is hidden to us because of its light, because of its rays. So we, ha we have the rays of the sun. Uh, so it's, it's the light of the sun. Uh, and it is clearly always reminds us of the presence of the sun, but the sun itself, we don't see it. We, we see only the rays coming, coming from it. And uh, I think that here, it's clearly the same kind of relation we have to the hidden caliph, which is the Mohammedan reality, which manifests itself uh, in the different stages of being that we just saw uh, before. And in the, uh, in the corporeal material world, in the Adamic human form that we know. But this, uh, even if we have a corporeal existence, a corporeal experience of, of reality, we have also uh, uh, always this spiritual um, experience. We have a spiritual di dimension, meaning that in human being, we have both, uh, yeah, the, uh, it's, sorry, in human being are both present, uh, the, yeah, the, the Adamic form, we are all Bani Adam, we are all uh, sons of Adam, he is the father of mankind, the father of the bodies, as says Ibn Arabi. But we have also the presence, the hidden presence of this Mohammedan reality, which is, uh, as Ibn Arabi puts it, the, the father of the, of the spirits. So there is a spiritual hidden presence of the Caliph in every human being. Kaisari says, we perceive the hidden world, Alam al Batin, that is the world of the Jabarut and the Malakut, huh? we, we saw this, through our spirits, through our hearts, and through all our uh, spiritual faculties. And we perceive the manifest world, Alam al Zahir, through our bodies, our sensory organs, and our faculties that are imprinted in it. In another, in another passage, Kaisari says, every human individual has a portion of this caliphate, of this spiritual caliphate, through which actually he manages what is attached to him as the sovereign manages his kingdom or the master of a house manages his house. Its lowest form, the lowest form of this caliphate, it's the person managing his body and this occurs to the children by the authority of the heritage, the wiratha, of the great progenitor, Al-Walid Al-Akbar. But the supreme caliphate is that of the perfect man. So just to, 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 to try to summarize it, the, the very fact that we have, we can say maybe consciousness or spirit or whatever you want and the fact that we 
manage uh, our body and that we have freedom of action, it's the, it's the presence of this supreme caliphate, hidden caliphate of the Mohammedan reality coming uh, to us through the chain of manifestation and of being that we saw that goes uh, through the first intellect and then the Adam, the body, the great progenitor, Walid al-Akbar. So we, we, we receive it, we receive this Mohammedan uh, spiritual reality through the Adamic heritage, in, in other words. Um, yeah, maybe, okay, uh, because I think it's, it was maybe very dense, I will now uh, go straight to the, to the conclusions. So what can, we, what can we make out of all this was very, as I said in introduction, very metaphysical. What is now the experiential? And I think we already have some kind of hints here. I think that a very classical Akbari kind of approach of this and, and Kaysari is, even though he is very, as I said, systematical, philosophical, he clearly has always this in mind in, uh, in very precise fashion, is that ultimate reality is not, as I said, uh, uh, yeah, attainable through construction, but through deconstruction. That is that we have to strip, uh, uh, to strip ourselves uh, of anything that is illusion, superfluous. So if we uh, go back to what we, what we saw, being human is always two things. It's being in the world uh, because of the macrocosmic, microcosmic correlation. Being human is always for us, for our, our experience, being in the world. That is like uh, Husserl and Heidegger said, uh, uh, I would say this uh, lettre au monde, uh, be, being to the world, I think, or something like this. But it's also always being by God, not necessarily being in God, uh, even though we can, in some intellectual aspects, uh, in, uh, view things like this, but it's being by God. Because we saw that even, uh, the, yeah, if, even our very, conscious way of being is actually just coming from the Mohammedan reality and uh, it is uh, pouring <laughs> on, on us and it's not, not our own. So to attain, uh, to attain pure being and to attain pure human <laughs> being is to, as I say, to, to be stripped of any illusory way of being human, being in the world, or being by God. This tajrid, this uh, stripping, uh, is to be understood as the proper form of what the Sufis call the tahalluq bi akhlaqillah. We always, we used to, to translate this and to understand this as we kind of wear the, the divine qualities. Okay, I'm I'm a poor human being and I will wear uh, the crown of generosity, which is a divine uh, quality. No, tachaluk, even, even linguistically, is a passive form uh, of the halaka, uh, of the second form of, uh, of the, the idea to, to create or to give specific character to something. So the akhlaqillah, they are, they are reality. Uh, it is the, the, the cosmos, it is uh, God. So in order to attain this, uh, this tachaluk, we have to get rid of, of everything that is not uh, being in cosmos and being by God. And actually, of course, the, the intellect uh, is, has, is a uh, double, uh, uh, yeah, uh, double, uh, or to say a double sword here, because it can help us to to act like this, but it can also imprison us uh, in uh, an, in a false reality, a false relation, 
uh, to the world and to God. Very interestingly, uh, Kaisari uh, in his commentary quotes a passage from the, another chapter of the Fusus al-Hikam by Ibn Arabi of the Fas Ilyas, in which uh, the Sheikh al-Akbar says, the apprehension, so here is the term al-wahm, uh, not the wahm as uh, fan, uh, uh, phantasma, or, but wahm as uh, the Avicennian faculty of just apprehension, just we, okay, I have an, not a comprehension and, and not an active comprehension of the world, but, but a passive appreciation of the world. The apprehension, says Ibn Arabi, is the supreme authority in this perfect human form. And through it came the descending revelations, al-shara'i, al munazzala That is why they, the, so the, the, the perfect human being, they profess both transcendence and immanence, because transcendence and immanence are way to uh, comprehend, to understand things, but are, it's not an apprehension. Apprehension is both, always both uh, transcendence and immanence. We don't, we don't really know. And Kaisari uh, in another passage says, synthesizing the transcendence and the immanence, the tanzih and the tashbih is the way of the prophets. This is the, 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 the most perfect way to express uh, reality. So in order to access to, uh, to this reunion of transcendence and, uh, and immanence, we, we need to, to be stripped from uh, everything that it is not. That is, of course, uh, the, what Ibn Arabi and his commentators calls the ubudiya, uh, the, the perfect servanthood, being actively passive towards God uh, and towards God in the world again. So that is why the Caliph, Kaisari says, is a lord over the cosmos according to his level, because he manages the cosmos, but he's a servant of God according to his reality. So he, he can only really act as a lord over the cosmos if he is a true servant uh, of God, he, if he is according to his reality. As Ibn Arabi uh, famously says, the human being, which is not a perfect, perfect man, a perfect human being is not a human being. It, it is an animal which resembles the, the, the human being. Another uh, passage from Kaiser is illustrating, sorry, illustrating this is uh, one which he says the one whose disposition of its essence does not receive knowledge and comprehension of the names and attributes in their entirety is not able to serve the real through all the names. Therefore, no one serves the real completely except for the perfect man. He is the complete servant. So the perfect servanthood is perfection, perfection of the, the perfect man. But very uh, in, interestingly, this perfection is not, as I said uh, in the beginning and, and just now, it just, it's not something which is added to the, the human uh, being. It's, all, it's actually something which is uh, kind of stripped from him. Uh, in a very uh, interesting passage, Kaisari comments on two famous, uh, uh, two famous verses uh, of a couple of verses from the Quran. The first is uh, in uh, chapter 95, Surah 13, uh, verses four and five. We have created the human being in the best, uh, the best of, of, of uh, constitutions, and then we brought him uh, at the lowest of the of the lowest. And the other uh, famous uh, uh, verse, which he will comment uh, uh, upon, is that uh, everything in in the 
uh, in the, the seven heavens and on the earth uh, glorifies, uh, glorifies God. Uh, and there is nothing that does not glorify him by uh, his, by his, um, yeah, lo, lo, by his praise, sorry. But they do not understand common men. They do not understand their uh, glorification. And an interesting so commentary of of Kaisari on on these two verses is that he says the station of the perfect man includes uh, the station, so the, the station of human being in their entirety, the lofty and the lowly. He glorifies God through all of them. He knows this, the one who knows, oh, sorry, he knows this, the one whose knowledge comprehends the point of ascent, so the matla, uh, the, what did I say, which is the, the very title of the work of Kaisari, huh? the point of ascent, the ladder, the hermeneutical ladder uh, of God saying, there is nothing, sorry, sorry there is nothing that does not glorify him by his praise. So he knows this, the one whose knowledge comprehends the point of ascent of this verse, who contemplates the quality of their sensory, imaginal, and intellective glorification in the tongue of their states and their disposition at every instant. And who knows that he himself glorifies God in the levels of his imperfection, just as he glorifies him in the levels of his perfection. For his imperfection is also part of his perfection. And this alludes to a very incredible passages of the Futuhat of Ibn Arabi about perfection in being and, and imperfection, which I presented uh, here uh, la last year in this uh, the core of my doctoral thesis. And now to, just to finish this, uh, I wanted to just, just, just to, sh to share with you another uh, Quranic commentary. It's also, because also it's important to always remember that all of this, as said, as said Ibn Arabi, is just commentaries on the Quran, of course, because Quran and a perfect man are one and the same thing. And it's a commentary of, on the also very famous verse, the verse, uh, the verse sorry, 72 of chapter uh, 33, uh, uh, so it is the, the, the famous verse of Al-Amana, the deposit uh, in which God uh, says that the names or God in the, in the plural form uh, gives a deposit or proposed a deposit to the ah, sorry to the skies to the earth to the mountains and they were afraid of it and they refused to take care of it but the human being he, he took care of it and there is this interesting end of the verse he in who can is a loom and jehulan he is a wrongdoer uh, uh, unjust and ignorant so all the the exegetical tradition a commentary on the Quran commented on how, how, how sh should we understand uh, the relation between this uh, yes this function of the human being that take care takes care of the deposit and this uh, wrongfulness and uh, this ignorance. So what Kaisari says to us is that uh, the people of heavens and earth, meaning the peoples of Malakut, Jabarut, and all the levels of manifestations were not able to take care of the divine deposit, which is the presence, the divine presence, uh, most perfect uh, divine presence, the, perfect, the, the, the presence of all the names, of all the perfections, as we say. But men, uh, men took care of this deposit, he took care of, of this presence. Why? Because he is wrongful, but wrongful to his self, because he kills it. He, he is extinguishing his essence in the essence of God most high. And because he is ignorant, he is ignorance of others than God, others than him. 
and is forgetful. Insan is nisyan from forgetfulness. Is forgetful about what is apart from God. Is negating what is opposing him by his word, la ilaha illallah, there is no divinity but God. Thank you very much. Thank you.